We're here with Tia Fuller at the Jazz Showcase in Chicago. And Tia, first of all, we'd like to welcome you to Chicago Thank and you. to the world famous Fable Jazz Showcase. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. It's our first time here, and I'm very happy to play this legendary legendary venue here in, in Chicago. As you can see just from the pictures and the posters throughout yeah. the, the, the club, everyone who's anyone has played this oh. club at some time <laughs> or another. Yes, yes. And so we can add you to this. Is this your first time to uh, working in Chicago? Um, well, it's my first time working with my band. Okay. Uh, I was here last year with Beyonce. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> so it wasn't at the jazz showcase. But, but, <laughs> but with your band, this is your first time yeah. doing the jazz engagement. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. <laughs> Why don't you give uh, jazzchicago.net a overview of your background, uh, particularly your musical background, and, and then and particularly also your jazz background? Um, my musical background actually stems from when I was really young. I um, come from a family of musicians. My mom and dad started a band before we were, my sister and I were even born, Fuller okay. Sound. And so my dad plays bass, my mom sings. Okay. And uh, we were reared in a jazz um, filled environment. Okay. Um, I used to hear the like Train and Bird and Sarah Vaughan all throughout the household when we were cleaning the house as a child. So, <laughs> and then even when my sister and I were outside playing, they'd be rehearsing on the weekends. Oh, okay. um, so that's really the basis of, um, of why I kind of became a part of the jazz, or playing jazz. So it's... <laughs> okay. okay. Now, it's been obviously pretty well documented that you have been working with Beyonce for quite some time. Yeah. Uh, is it difficult crossing over between R&B and jazz? Um, no, it's, it's not difficult. It's just, it's almost like a mother being a mother with, to her children and then going to work and having to be um, a, a, a business worker. You just have to put on two different hats. You're okay. the same person. Okay. And so with, with the Beyonce thing, um, it was really, I mean, we're still dealing with a lot of music, right. but um, it was just executed differently um, with a lot of, <laughs> with a lot of extra things involved, like wardrobe and choreography, okay. Okay. <laughs> and um, being in eight to twelve to thirteen hour rehearsals, okay. playing a lot wow. of the same stuff, and so it was. I really found that it was a different kind of discipline that really had to. Uh, really had to tap into it as far as playing the same thing over and over again after 106 shows wow. on top of like traveling every day to another country okay. every day and then rehearsing um, doing those production rehearsals like 12 hour rehearsals of just a lot of us a lot of times we're just sitting there okay whereas okay. of course in the jazz field um, it's 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 largely built upon your spontaneity, okay. your creativity, and really um, functioning out of that. Okay. So it's um, two different hats, but okay. both music, which right. is really great. And one thing that I learned being with Beyonce is that no matter what, how, how many people, because we played for 30,000, 40,000, 50,000 people, right. and I could come to a jazz club, and it could be 10, 20, 30 people right. in the club. Right. And um, the energy is universal. And okay. the energy is the same when you're playing. So that's something that going from 30,000 to 30 people okay. is the same thing. You're, we're really trying to touch musicians and okay. are trying to touch the people, the audience members okay. out there. Next question is in two parts. One, first part is, um, what influence has Beyonce had on, on your on career and vice versa? What influence have you had on Beyonce? Ah, that's a good question. <laughs> um, she's had an enormous amount on my career in that I've really been more aware of the production of, of um, shows, okay. um, really taking into account, really, I did this before, but even to another level, looking at the set list okay. and creating something, having something somewhat consistent uh -huh. and a flow happening in the show to where, or in my show, to where we're having a combination of different genres of music still in one set, okay. and it's flowing. It's, it's keeping the audience engaged as well. 
Um, and along the same lines, audience participation, I think sometimes as creative musicians or jazz musicians, we have a tendency to just play and focus on that spontaneity and the creativity of it, which is beautiful and the most important thing. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times, especially for the non-jazz aficionados, um, we have to kind of reach out to them and try to grab them and pull them in so we could expand the jazz listeners, all of the listeners out there. So audience participation and um, interaction and just explaining what the tune is about. One thing that we as instrumentalists opposed to vocalists don't have is we don't have the ability to tell a story verbally, the okay. oral tradition. So as musicians, of course, the creativity is there and the imagination is like, oh, this is... But it's nice to preface the tune and to kind of lay the groundwork. Okay, this is what I was thinking or feeling or this is what I was writing about and listen for this particular aspect of the song or this particular... And that gives them something to work with so that they could kind of connect, connect the dots with, with the tunes, the non-verbal and the instrumental music. And have you had have an opportunity to have an influence on... Beyonce's Definitely. Uh, productions and music. And oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's, one thing about her, she's really great with um, keeping, she's very humble and okay. always wants to explore. And so, um, and specifically, the first show that we did, the first tour, we actually put Love Supreme in there okay. as oh, an really? interlude. Yeah. Okay. And um, the tenor saxophonist played that. And then this year we did um, it's a live DVD recorded at Wynn Theaters, live at Wynn Theaters. In Vegas. And, yeah, in Vegas. And we did this last July, I believe, July or August. And um, now they're playing it, but there's a specific section where she wanted to go into like a jazz tap dance section. Okay. So we were in rehearsal, and it was in G minor, this, this area was over Deja Vu, her song Deja Vu. Okay. And I was like, hey, B, why don't we play um, How High the Moon? And so we called up. We went to YouTube, and I was showing her um, Ella's version of Somewhere This Music. And she ended up implementing that in the show. Wait a minute. You're vocalist also. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a nice oh, thank you. I enjoyed that. I didn't realize that you also was a vocalist. No, um, I, I try. My you mom's a vocalist, so I... I, I like to sing, but it's, I'm definitely yeah, not You have a scat doing your, any, any of your performance? I do, do? Okay. but it's usually out of fun. Right, and right. There's one song that I usually sing, and I haven't done this week, but it's a song that I wrote titled Life Brings. Okay. And, um, but other than that, I, I like singing. I just, okay. I've never really, really studied well, I, it. I just do it out of fun. And, I, can yeah. some, I can hear some vocals there. Oh, okay, sure. thank Absolutely. you. You got an instrument there, too. Yeah. Don't, don't forget about that. <laughs> difficult to play and to vocalize exactly at the same time. exactly right. um,